Mr. Sylvia. Honorable Madam Speaker, will the Minister of Home Affairs be pleased to state? A. Is this government really committed to the welfare of Gorkha communities residing in Darjeeling and Terai doors? B. If so, then what initiative has the government of India taken so far to address the permanent political solution as promised by a party in the Lok Sabha election manifesto of 2019 to the people of Darjeeling and Terai doors? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, the Minister of Home Affairs, please. Honorable Speaker, Madam, through you, I would like to answer to the queries raised by Honorable Member. Yes, ma'am, our government is always committed to the welfare of Gorkha communities. Perhaps ours is the only first Indian national political party to recognize the contribution of Gorkhas towards building of our nation. It is a fact that when the political dispensation of the state of which Gorkhas comprises a sizable chunk label them as outsiders and foreigners, our party embraced the Gorkhas with both hands and acknowledged the value and patriotism. Objection, ma'am. Yours is a party that or may be a pool of Gorkhas that may divide the world. I will never allow you to pay the Bengal party just once again. Honorable members, this is not the parliamentary decorum. Let the Honorable Minister complete the statement first. You may proceed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, ma'am. We reiterate our commitment made in the election manifesto 2019 with regard to granting PPS to the Gorkhas as we felt that the successive experimentation in the form of granting semi-autonomous body like DGLC and GTA aimed to satisfy the aspiration of Gorkhas have been an utter failure. There used to be a periodic chaos and instability in this region, which the government of India cannot afford to percolate for long, considering the proximity of this sensitive region with hostile neighbors. Thank you, madam. Honorable madam, honorable minister is directly interfering in the subject, which comes under the domain of state government. Honorable Minister, please. Thank you, Speaker, Madam. Ma'am, to keep our promise of granting PPS to the Gorkhas, we had initiated a tripartite talk on first week of September 2021 in New Delhi, where every stakeholder took part except the state government representatives. But since we believe in the federal structure of the government, we could not arrive at a decision due to the absence of state government representatives. Still, our government is making every effort to convince the state government about the need to sit together in an amicable atmosphere and restart the negotiation at the earliest. Thank you, madam. <coughs> Supplementary question, ma'am. Yes, Ms. Annie. What is the need for tripartite talk now? Considering the fact that a bulk per number of 318 candidates have nominated as candidate for 45 GJCs in the recently democratically held GTA elections. It seems that the majority of the people residing in the GTA areas are satisfied about the functioning of GTA. Thank you. Honorable Minister, please. Honorable Speaker, Madam, the recently held GTA election was just an eyewash. Why eyewash? It was an election. Or I just want to order, order. Honorable Member, please take your seat. Honorable Minister, please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Madam. I just want to say that a peaceful chicken make region that is developed and progress 
to its full potential is in the larger interest of the nation. Thank you, madam. Question number one four six. Sushi Petigya. Honorable Speaker, madam, will the Minister of Education be pleased to state? A. The timeline with regard to the setting up of gender and social inclusion funds in National Education Policy 2020. B. The role of states in defining their priorities to access these funds. Thank you, madam. Honorable Education Minister, please. Honorable Madam Speaker, through you, I would like to answer to the queries raised by Honorable Member. <laughs> National Education Policy 2020 provides for setting up a gender inclusion fund, especially for girls and transgender students, to build the nation's capacity to provide equitable quality education to all girls as well as transgender students. The department has incorporated several interventions for the girls in its revamped Samagra Section Scheme, which includes providing free textbooks and uniforms to all girls at elementary level, residential schools, hostels, transport, escort facility, aids and appliances for children with special needs, upgradation of Kasturba Gandhi Badika Vitalayas to provide residential and schooling facilities up to class 12, separate provision of stipends for CWS and girls at the rate of rupees 200 per month for 10 months in addition to student component from pre-primary to senior secondary level, incinerator and sanitary pad vending machines in all girls hostels and self-defense training for girls in government schools for inculcating skills for self-protection and self-development. Thank you, madam. Question number 176, Sushi Yojana. Adyaksha Nepali Bhasha, Bharatko Savidhan ko Artha Anusuchima, Antar Bhukta Bhai, Manita Pae Bapat, Desko Ataro Bhasha to Rukma, Parichal and Bhayata Pani. Honorable Minister, please. Hindu University lie, do it or Rupia. 
नॉर्थ बेंगल यूनिवर्सिटी लाई एक दस मलाव दुई करोड़ रुपिया रा बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी लाई एक दस मलाव तीन करोड़ रुपिया प्रदान करिए को मधुरी ले मार खाए बने मात्र रोको पचार उनसे अधेक समोदय तरह सरकार लाई अहिले सब में प्राप्त विवरण अनुसार दा गोरखा बहुतल क्षेत्र के स्वयं परिषद समेत ले आपने भाषा लगा दिया ज्यादा प्राथमिकता तो अंग्रेजी भाषा लाई दिए का सम फॉल स्वरूप अहिले दार्जिलिंग पहाड़ के कुला गर्म पड़ता यहाँ 130 वाटर सरकार ले सहूलियत प्राप्त विद्यालय मध्य केवल सात वाटर ले मात्र पचन पाठन नेपाली भाषा में संचालन करी रहे सम और एक समोदय केवल सात वाटर पाठ चला और जिस दुनिया में आओ देख सकी यहाँ का अभिभावक रसिक्षक और को सभा में तो अभिभावक पक्ष का हर लेता गौर हो सात को बंद चला रहे था मेरो ना रहता सारे विषय में राम रह सकी कल तेज़ लाई नेपाली नहीं आओ देना हो ये सही तो विडम बना था पेर को भाषा बोलने को क्या ये सरकार को भूल हो बनु मिल जाओ ला ना ये सही ले मो मेरो समान नहीं आ विपक्षी मिल चला है और उनको आम को ज़ूम रहा ना है रहा आप नो आम को भाई को तांडव का ध्यान दीने सुधाव लाग दशु गाने बात प्रिंट 
इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया सोशल मीडिया इंटरनेट वेबसाइट लाइव आर्ट्स और इंटरपर्सनल मीडिया जैसे साधनों का उपयोग करके अपनी विभिन्न मीडिया यूनिटों जैसे पत्र सूचना कार्यालय पी केंद्रीय संचार ब्यूरो एस बी सी पूर्वती बी दूरदर्शन और आकाशवाणी के माध्यम से सरकारी नीतियों कार्यक्रमों पहलों और उपलब्धियों पर सूचना का प्रचार प्रसार करता है सूचना और प्रसारण मंत्रालय ने अप्रैल से जून 2022 के महीनों के दौरान सेवा सुशासन और गरीब कल्याण थीम पर एक व्यापक जन सूचना अभियान आरंभ किया जिसमे समाज के कमजोर वर्गों के उत्थान संबंधी सहित विभिन्न सरकारी स्कीमों और कार्यक्रमों पर प्रकाश भी डाला गया इसके साथ ही सूचना और प्रसारण मंत्रालय की मीडिया यूनिटों ने कोविड 19 के विरुद्ध लोगों की भागीदारी के माध्यम से जागरूकता अभियान चलाने में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाई धन्यवाद मैडम नेक्स्ट एंड द लेस्ट ऑफ बिजनेस एट द ब्रिज ऑफ प्रिवेलेज सुश्री प्रतिज्ञा मैडम अ सीरियस ब्रिज ऑफ प्रिवेलेज हैज बीन कमिटेड बाय द सीबीआई ड्यूरिंग अ रेड एट सुश्री आचल राय अ सीनियर पार्लियामेंटेरियन रेजिडेंट ऑन फोर्थ अप्रैल 2022 आचल राय हाईली कॉन्फिडेंशियल नोट्स व्हिच वर सपोज्ड टू बी रेड इन पार्लियामेंट were all seized by the CBI on that day the entire matter was reported by indian times in the sun times indian express on 5th april madam i have requested you to allow me to raise a question on that matter sushi pratigya have you given the notice of it earlier you may give due notice along with a copy of newspaper cutting and then i shall consider it You cannot spring a surprise on me like this. Yes, ma'am. I have already given you the notice of it at 10 a.m. today. It will be examined when it comes to me. I shall consider it and let you know my decision. Now, and the last of business is papers to be let. Honorable Minister of Minority Affairs, Madam. I beg to lay on a table a copy each of the following notifications under subsection 1 of section 394 of the Companies Act 2013 A 32nd annual report and account of the National Schedule Caste Finance and Development Corporation Delhi for the year 2020 to 2021 together with auditor reports and the comments of the controller and auditor general of India Theorem B Review by the government on the working of the above corporation. Thank you, madam. Honorable Minister of Road, Transport, and Highway. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay on the table a copy, each in English as well as Hindi, of the following notification of the Ministry of Road Transport and Highway, under Subsection 4 of Section 212 of the Motor Vehicles Act, 1988, along with explanatory memoranda and delay statement. B. G S R 525 E. Dated the 3rd August 2021, publishing the Central Motor Vehicles 16th Amendment Rules 2021. Thank you. Papers to be let. <coughs> Now, next and the last of business is the message from the upper chamber. Secretary General may convey the report of the message from the upper chamber. <coughs> Madam, I have reported the following message from the Secretary of the Upper Chamber of the New Parliament. In accordance with provisions of the rules and procedure and conduct of business in the Upper House of the New Chamber, I am directed to enclose a copy of Farm Laws Repealed. Thank you. 
Secretary General to lay on the table a copy of the bill as passed by the upper chamber. Now, let us take out the calling attention motion. Sushi Sylvia, please call the attention of the Minister of Finance. Madam Speaker, I beg to call the attention to the Minister of Finance. To the situation arising out of the effort of the Union Government to achieve cashless transactions, thereby exposing the majority of our population to the risk of falling prey, to the ever-increasing cybercrime and fraud. Honourable Minister of Finance, please. Honourable Speaker, Madam, through you, I would like to answer to the queries raised by Honourable Member. Cashless transaction ensures transparency and reduces black money formation. Cashless transaction counters tax evasions. The problem faced by Indian mass like pickpocketing and robbery can be eliminated if we switch on to cashless transaction. 45% of India's GDP is influenced by informal economy and cashless economy forces informal sector to transform itself into formal sector. This government believes that the expenditure for the manufacture of currency notes can be avoided by cashless economy. Tourists to India have no need to struggle for physical cash. Corruption and commission culture can be eradicated by online payment modes. Today, ever since the demonetization drive of the government on 8th of November 2016, we have progressed quite a distance. Today, all subsidies and welfare scheme benefits can be directly utilized by the beneficiaries without the need of withdrawing money, thus avoiding the inconvenience. Thank you, Madam. Sushiani. Madam Speaker, really I have to thank the Chair for giving me an opportunity to call the attention of the Finance Minister for taking up the discussion with regards to the government situation arising out of cyber fraud case. In my state of West Bengal, a woman received a message of online part-time job and was directed to WhatsApp number and thereafter to an app when she clicked on the link. She got herself registered for the job in the app for the fee of rupees 100 only. She was then offered rupees 200 in return for an investing rupees 100. The woman, over a period of some days, continued to spend the money and eventually discovered that she had been cheated of her over rupees 2 lakh hard earned money. Thank you. Sushi so Pratigya. Thank you, Madam, for giving me an opportunity to raise my voice in calling the attention of the Minister. Madam, I represent the Satara constituency of Maharashtra. I have also come across reports of several fraudulent transactions in my area. The latest one is of a cyber theft to the tune of Rs. 3.82 lakh from the account of none other than the famous film producer Pony Kapoor on 9 February 2022. My point is, if such a famous and conscious personality like Pony Kapoor is not immune to cyber rigging, then how the government expects to transform India, which comprises of more than 60% digi illiterate and poor internet connectivity into a cashless economy? Honourable Minister, please. Honourable Speaker, Madam, I must appreciate the concern raised by honourable members regarding cybercrime and cyber fraud. Yes, it is true that the lack of digital consciousness among the bulk of our citizens and the lack of smooth internet connectivity in remote areas have to 
some extent obstructed our vision of achieving cashless economy by 2030. But having said that, I must convey it to the House through you, Madam, that this government is very serious and proactive to address and tackle the issues arising out of cyber menace. The present government has taken several stringent initiatives for cyber security. A national cyber security strategy 2020 is being formulated by the Office of National Cyber Security Coordinator at the National Security Council Secretariat. The aim is to improve the cyber awareness and cyber security through more stringent audits. Impaneled cyber auditors will look more carefully through the security features of organizations. On 20th of May, 2022, the Ministry of Home Affairs of Central Government launched a cyber helpline number 1930 for redressal of his cyber crimes. The victims of cyber crimes can dial the cyber emergency number 1930 and can get help help on an urgent basis. Further, there is a helpline number 155260 launched on 29th of November 2021 in the Union Ministry of Home Office to report a cyber crime. When people call cyber emergency number 155260, the details are entered in the portal and immediately shared with the bank concern that acts to temporarily stop the transfer of funds. Madam, the intention of the government is loud and clear to strive for our goal of achieving cashless economy. Agar ye sarkar aaj kuch karne ki thanti hai, to is kaale mein utpanna sabhi baadao ka dar kar saamna karne ki bhi chhamata rakhti hai. Mananya Dhyaksha Modaya Dhanivaad. Now, and the list of business is introduction of the Honorable Minister of Law and Justice to introduce the bill. Madam Speaker, I beg to move for leave to introduce the bill. The Election Laws Amendment Bill 2021. The question is that leave be granted to introduce a bill further to amend the Election Laws Amendment Bill 2021. Those who are in favour will please say aye. aye. Those who are against will please say no. I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Leave is granted. Madam, I introduce the bill. Now, the House will take up consideration for the Election Laws Amendment Bill 2021. Honorable Prime Minister, please. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the bill further to amend the Representation of the People Act 1950 and the Representation of the People Act 1951 be taken into consideration. Also to move that the bill be passed. Number one, deduplication of electoral roll. Madam, the Election Laws Amendment Bill 2021 provides for amendment of Section 23 of the Representation of the People Act 1950, enabling the linking of electoral roll data with Aadhaar ecosystem. This aims to curb the menace of multiple enrollment of same person in different places, which will eventually help in stopping bogus voting and fraudulent votes. Members, please maintain silence. Let the Honourable Minister complete her statement first. Madam, this linking is in consonance with 105th report of the Department Related Parliamentary Standing Committee on Personal, Public Grievances and Law and Justice. Number two, multiple enrollment dates. The citizens get voting rights when they turn 18. However, many are left out of the electoral roll even after turning 18. This is because in the current system, 1st January is the qualifying date. 
According to the bill, four qualifying dates will be declared, amending section 14 of the RP Act for updating the voting rules to include those who have turned 18. The first day of the month of January, April, July and October. Number three, bringing gender neutrality. Madam, this bill proposes to amend section 20 of the Representation of the People Act 1950 and section 60 of the Representation of the People Act 1951 to make election gender neutral for voters from different services. This amendment replaces the word wife with spouse as until now an army man's wife is entitled to be enrolled as service voter but a woman army officer husband is not. Madam, I am confident that all honorable members of this house irrespective of party affiliation will welcome the bill wholeheartedly. With these words, I now move that the election laws Amendment Bill 2021 be taken into consideration. Thank you. Motion moved that the bill seeking amendment of RP Act 1950 and RP Act 1951 to pave the way for the election laws amendment bill 2021 be taken into consideration. Sushi Sylvia. Madam Speaker. I strongly object to what Prime Minister proposed as regards to linking Aadhaar with voter ID. Aadhaar is only made to be proof of residence. It's not a proof of citizenship. If you are in a position asking Aadhaar for voters, all you are getting is a document that reflects your residence, not citizenship. You are potentially giving the votes to non-citizens. Thank you, ma'am. Shizamu. Madam Speaker, the bill as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister is totally unjustified in the present form. This bill in the current form will allow the government to profile and disenfranchise voters. Madam, linking of voter ID and Aadhaar violates the fundamental right to privacy as defined by the ethics code in its judgment. The House is not competent to enact such laws that violates the fundamental rights of citizens. It's against Buddha Swami's judgment. Government does not have legislative competence to make such laws, Honorable Prime Minister. Aadhaar has one point Five percent more mistakes than the voter list. This is against universal suffrage. Madam, let me cite one glaring example. In 2018, ID cards were linked with other database in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Later, names of at least 55 lakhs voters went missing from the electoral roll. It ultimately forced the government to roll back the decision. Kya ye sabhi baat hai jhooti hai? Agar hai, to sach baat kya hai Pradhan Matri ji? Honorable Prime Minister, please. Madam Speaker, Majid ki tilli ka sir hota hai. पर दिमाग नहीं इसीलिए वो थोड़े से घर्षण से जल उठती है हमारे पास तो सिर भी है और दिमाग भी है फिर आप छोटी सी बात के लिए इतनी उत्तेजित क्यों आ जाते हैं मंत्री जी वाणी में सुई भले ही रखो पर उसमें धागा डाल कर रखो ताकि सुई के वह छेद ही ना करे बल्कि आपस में माला की तरह पीरो कर भी रखे मैडम सीखो किसी वृक्षों काटने के लिए आप मुझे छह घंटे दीजिए और पहले चार घंटे में कुल्हाड़ी की धार तेज करने में लगाऊंगी मैडम सीखो I have meticulously gone through the details of the draft of election laws amendment bill 2021 
and took the help of legal experts before presenting the same in front of you all. I do not find any substance and do not opine to what my honourable friend sitting right in front of me and to the left of you, honourable speaker, madam, spoken in the house. It is quite ironic that some leaders who have been criticising the bill have been the part of standing committee earlier where such recommendations were made. Madam, nowhere in the bill is it mentioned that linking Aadhaar is mandatory. It is just voluntary. No application will be rejected because Aadhaar number has not been provided. I reiterate, madam, no application will be rejected because Aadhaar number has not been provided. I hope I have answered most of the points raised by the members in course of my speech. I once again thank you all for your support and seek your cooperation in implementing the same. I now request the House to pass the bill. Thank you. Motion moved that the bill is passed. We have come to the end of the monsoon session of the Parliament. Hope to meet you all at the winter session. Thank you.